What's going on, Paisanos? Fake V here. Coming at you guys well, with another market watch today. Actually, it's not much of a market watch as is a meta analysis of what could possibly be the best deck come post January 2020 balance. To my opinion, I think there's very few cards that can stop this deck. Uh, if you guys seen the title and description, you probably already read it already, but I think it's Thunder Dragon Seaf. Before I begin talking about that deck, guys, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and comment down below. Comment question of the day. What are you be playing post 2020 balance? Do you have your deck ready? Are you going to be going with like Magical Musketeers? Or are you going to be going with something like Orcus? You're like, I don't care what happened, happens to Orcus. I'm still going to put everything together and play an Orcus variant. What are you playing come the new balance? That's about, we should be getting it in about a month or so. A uh, month and a couple of weeks, hopefully. Maybe maybe earlier than that. Maybe on January 13th. That'd be kind of awesome too. But uh, yeah, we'd love to know what's going on with as far as the balance and what we're getting, what's coming off and what's going on. And what deck you're playing. But before again, guys, if you guys are not playing Orcus, Ultimate Rare Dingir Suits at an OTS Tournament Pack 11. The Ultimate Rare version, once again, is around $41 in the market price. The value is at $39 for Dingir Suit. Now, let me explain something to you. <clears throat> if Orcus gets hit in the ban list, I think we can safely say that there's a good chance it's going to get hit in the ban list. Or if Orcus gets neutered, so something else could be higher, which, once again, there's a good chance that can happen, I think Dingir Suit is going to go down in value. Would you agree? I think it's going to tank in value. So it's currently $40 right now, and you trade it into your local OTS, or if you went somewhere and maybe look at the trade binder and saw, the, and you had the uses that they wanted, what would you want to get for this card? Well, my opinion, the same card in the same set, uh, Pot of Zaya is coming out of OTS Tournament Pack 11, the same tone OTS Tournament Pack. The current value in Pot of Zaya is uh, Ultimate Rate is about $56. The value in the card is about 54. It's a little bit more expensive than an Ultimate Red Dengirisu, but it's going to lash you more in the market. Once again, guys, you have a month before this is done. You have a month before this changes and before the value is just absolutely night and day shows difference. I think Ultimate Red Pot is Ice is definitely a great card. It has a ton of future potential, a lot of decks and uses, and unless it's hitting the balance next month, it's still gonna be a pretty valuable card. Unlike Dingusu, which once again, like we said earlier, is not going to be a valuable card if and more than likely when Konami hits Orcus on the ban list. So if you have Ultimate Red Dingusu, definitely try to use it towards getting an Ultimate Red Pot of Zayas, which has more value. So look at the ban list real quickly, guys. Konami says the next update uh, after this will be no sooner than January 13, 2020. I mean, we can get a ban list uh, 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 announcement on like January 3rd or, or, or now, but it will not be a, an effect up and until after January 13, 2020. My take will probably be after, it'll probably be like the first week of February if I, if I had to guess a, like an exact date for when we're getting the ban list. I could be wrong though. Um, but, but what we're gonna be seeing here with the ban list and is all this ban speculation. And rightfully so, I mean, there's a lot of decks in this game right now, a ton of decks. In fact, if we go over here, look at the top four uh, decks in the game that I think is the top four tier decks, Orcus and all its variants. Salamangrate, pure, there's no other variant. Uh, Sky Striker and all its variants. Sky Striker Salamangrate, Sky Striker True Draco, and Sky Striker Pure. And Thunder Dragon and all its variants. And in today's video, I think Thunder Dragon out of all these four decks is still going to be the top dog post January ban list. I really do. I think everything else five and below on the Yu Gi Oh! Top Decks website is really tier 1.5. Still phenomenal, by the way. Still amazing. Maybe I'll do a deck analysis and we'll talk about these decks. But I think these four decks are the best. But you know something really weird with these four decks? Right off the gate, Thunder Dragons, uh, Thunder has an average price that's way higher than these other decks. I mean, if you want a cheap tier one deck, you're gonna play like pure Sky Strikers. The value is even less than the current average price point. And I guarantee you, you will still have great results. In fact, if you wanna play Orcus, it's so cheaper than Thunder Dragons. And little fun fact, if you're an Orcus player, you probably have, a, on average, a pretty decent matchup against Thunder Dragons. So why is Thunder Dragons or Thunder Dragon variant still one of the best decks? Well, because Colossus, which will probably get hit in the ban list. But this build, the Thunder Dragon Seafree build, it's still really good. I mean, look at the Dragons that was done in YCS England. It's a great example of the first showing of pure combo Thunder Dragons. That's okay with getting hit with a Nibiru because the deck can still keep going easily. I mean, yes, it runs two Thunder Dragon Colossus, but the combo ends with one Thunder Dragon Colossus. And to be honest with you, you can run one Thunder Dragon Colossus. Looking at the OCG, they have one Thunder Dragon Colossus currently hit. 
So you only can play one. And I think here in the TCG, that will more than likely be the hit and the banless for Thunder Dragons. Classes will go to one. But this build is almost banless proof. I'll talk about later in the video, uh, uh, two cards at least that just blow this out the water. But right now, looking at it, I really do think like this is the be all end all build, the, the, the post build of banless for Thunder Dragons. Because what are you going to hit, Konami? What's anyone going to hit? Gas Dragon Levy just got an Ultimate reprint in OTS Tournament Pack 12. I doubt that they're going to hit that. Um, you can hit any, any really anything like Draco Net, and it wouldn't really matter to be honest with you, because if you hit Draco Net, the deck can use other engines like the Guard Dragon engine, which we've seen as well. Um, we have Omni Dragon Brotar, which you can hit, but I'll talk about another card that also helps you search in a little bit. Sonny Shifri just recently came out, you're not gonna hit that card. And the rest of the Thunder Dragons, it doesn't matter which ones you hit, the deck can really it is really fluid as far as the core of Thunder Dragons that you can put into this deck because realistically you want to use it as utility as well as getting out Thunder Dragon Colossus. The side is pretty much open. The the the, the monster zones real uh, the the spell and traps are really good with like three alert, which I can easily run. Uh, Melody Awakening Dragon, I'll talk about in a second. All these other great cards that are really at one. The deck self balanced hit itself, <laughs> and it's still amazing. Now, once again, guys, if you're looking to buy this deck, I have a link down below. I'll probably type it in in, in the uh, in the description if you want to buy like a the cheapest version of this deck is about five hundred and twenty four dollars. I mean, cheapest, common everything, low rarity everything, about five hundred and twenty four dollars. That is, uh, of course, you know, you want to go in and if you, you know want certain cards, you grab certain cards out. But this is, I looked all around, and once again, I'll put it in, in the description down below or, or maybe the comment section. This is the cheapest build of the deck. So for the other dragon C Freaks, you're looking at $524. Once again, that is opposed to the Striker build, which averages $171. Orcus, they're probably the best deck out there, $332. Like, this is the cheapest build of this deck. But the difference is, this is a banless proof deck, in my opinion. I really do think that. In fact, against Striker players, you just go Darkest Diabolos, and you just literally sit on this car and look at them and go, have fun getting pure strikers, have fun getting over this. Starts with your bow's uh, innate effect is your opponent cannot tribute this card face up on the field and cannot target it with card effect. That's, that's the important part. So they're going to have to go into something more than just Shrine Sugar Ace Ray uh, into like Gagari or, or Hayate 1500 in the face. That would teach you. No, you have to do way more than that to get over this card. And the, and, and, and the deck runs this card out one and consistently brings this card out. Uh, it also runs, once again, a place that I started C free. That's why I'm shocked this card's going down in value. Now, I'll be the first to say I hated this card when it first came out because the value was way too high. And I believe the Dragon combo, it, it, why would you want to spend the money on this deck when you can spend it on Orcus, which is way cheaper? Well, as we're in near the end of the ban list, as we're getting, I mean, and uh, our current ban list, moving forward to a new ban list, once again, I do think the Dragon combo is the way to the go. Way to the go. Anyway, look at that solid C free. I think this is a phenomenal card. I think this card is. 100% going to be at 3, and it recently came out in Chaos Impact, our just newest core set. I don't think Konami's going to hit a card out of our newest core set. They almost never do. And look at the price point of Starly Shifri, but the value is $31, but with the unlimited printing coming in and starting to hit the market, especially this weekend, you'll see it hit the market even harder, this value is going down. Name and versions of Starly Shifri is roughly around $31. If you want a first season version, you can see one over here. It's a new store, though, but it's 31 Um, Another guy has over here. He, it's roughly around $33. Uh, for a first edition version of Stardew Chief. Once again, way cheaper than the $45 price point. And this will be the money card of the set if you already have cards like Cash Strike and Levy in the air. I mean, a place that these uh, right now, Secret out of Soul Future is $29. Let you, uh, let you pay it on limits about $28 and the mint's about $29. To be honest with you, the value of this card is going to go lower in value as OTS stores start receiving more and handing more out. Uh, OTS Run Pack 12 giving you your place access to Ultimate Rare Cash Strike and Levy in the air. So, when we get Ultimate Rare, this value will tank. It will 100% tank a value, non-negotiable, no questions, and the value will tank heavily. We're going to see this card probably go to, if I had to guess any number, $10. Maybe $12 for Chaos Strike 11 year. It's in a broken card, but when you have a higher rarity out, that's the, how, how, how big and impactful the difference in prices. Now, now I'm not saying it's going to go to it tomorrow. It will inevitably go to that price point as you can play crack more and more OTS 20 pack 12. But this is a three of in that deck. That's why when Konami reprinted Cash Strike 11 year as the Ultimate Rare and OTS 20 Pack 12, I was highly confused. I was excited. I love this card, but this card's broken. Most uh, control decks are running one back row, and most main decks are debating running, running like Cosmic Cyclone, MST, Twin Twisters. This card literally says if you go second, you just destroy both light, banish light and dark, and bring this guy out, and he pops two cards on the field. Any two cards, by the way, but mostly floodgates he literally breaks your opponent's board 
If you go first, no big deal. You can shuffle one card in your opponent's hand into your deck. You go out with Darkness Diabolos, you take a card and take it out of your opponent's hand. So your opponent's playing with three spell and trap cards if you go first. Um, uh, three cards in general, I'm sorry. If you go first. Plus the one draw. So they have four cards versus your end board, which I'll get to in a second. If you need to get Cash Dragon Living in your hand, you play Melody Awakening Dragon. This got one card, add two dragon type monsters with 3,000 or more attack and 2,500 or less defense. Basically, you're gonna add your Cash Dragon Living here. 3,000 attack. That defense definitely is dust and 2500 it's zero you just add that in your hand if only if only if only you can add oh wait yeah you can add dr seal bolus as well you can definitely do that that's 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 a card you can add, also add it's searchable so maybe could i make it hit this card but it still wouldn't matter because there's still so many other cards the deck can use the deck also wants to end with an appaloosa bowl the goddess current price point 71 dollars the value is roughly around 68 unlimited first edition doesn't matter and then there's Dungeon dragon colossus so Thunder Dragon Colossus currently right now is insanely cheap. Nobody really wants to play Thunder Dragons right now because we all know it's going to get hit by the banlist. And I agree with everybody who says that. It's definitely going to get hit by the banlist. The card's broken. If it doesn't, I'd be highly shocked. This card's insane. There's no really card like this in the game. Uh, we have a trap card that's called Mistake that has this effect that allows so your opponent can add cards. But that's also for you as well. You can see a trap card. I talked about Marker Watch about a week ago. It's a phenomenal trap card. About a dollar actually right now out of Shadow Spectres. But looking at Thunder Dragon Colossus out of OTS1 Pack 10, this card saves itself as it has that effect. And since it utilizes Thunder Dragons, they proc whenever they banish. This card is absolutely broken. And with Thunder Dragon combo, they, they could use this card even at 1 if this card was to go to 1. The current price point of the card, by the way, is $28. It's less than that. Barely holding on to that price point. It's about $27.55 on the market price for Ultimate Red Thunder Dragon Colossus. The value is going to go a lot lower, by the way, as we move more near the Bayless, and as you can play as Panic Cell Thunder Dragon Colossus, which I don't think is the correct thing to do. Uh, then we have number 38, Ho Heartbringer. <coughs> so there's a Gold Rare, which is absolutely incorrect. There's $4 for the Gold Rare. It looks disgusting. I'll show it to you guys in a second. I'd rather, I, this card is common. I played a common. I just hate Gold Rares. I, I, I. I'm not sure I did a video about that, or, or if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know I just hate Gold Rares. Value-wise, it's terrible. It's never good value. In fact, this version from its original version was way less already, but the value is like $4 for this card. It's just not worth it. It's super rare, by the way. And look at the Gold Rare, by the way. You can't read those letterings. You can't. It's gibberish. The, the artwork's kind of like, it's just, it's just absolutely, it's like the contrast was thrown all over the place. And you can hardly read the lettering in the box because the card looks absolutely atrocious. And they've been easy in corners. Whereas, once again, I'll show you the difference right there. It's just night and day difference. Super rare number, version of number 38 also is like a dollar. So, yeah, I'll go with this version. This is definitely, in my opinion, the better version. Anyway, this is another phenomenal card that could end into. And of course, there's some, you can play the same. Well, V, Chaos Dragons, uh, Chaos Dragons, Seafreed, Seafreed Dragons, whatever. You need a prize card, Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon. No, you do not. <laughs> you don't need this prize card. It definitely will help you, but uh, someone needs to tell Herman Hansen, who made top uh, uh, 16 in YCS England, that you need a prize card. He didn't use it, and he got it with that deck. This deck we're talking about right now, everything right here, he has done it. I think just because Yu-Gi-Oh players listen to other Yu-Gi-Oh players and other Yu-Gi-Oh players listen to other Yu-Gi-Oh players and watch videos on YouTube and uh, in a video, one guy said, hey, I definitely think you need a uh, um, Cast Emperor, the $1,000 card, almost you can't play a deck, and Yu-Gi-Oh players goes, okay, I'm not playing a deck. No, stop listening to people. This deck can still do its combo. It can still have the same kind of end board. So before I begin about what cards you want to do to stop, I just want to say, guys, please make sure to check me out on Instagram. Links will be down below. I post pictures every day, and I love that you guys follow me, and... Who loves quesadillas? Anyone else besides me? Because I love quesadillas. Okay, so what's the end board for the Thunder Dragon combo? So first of all, what they're going to do is they're going to go into Darkest Diabolos, pop a card in your hand. They're going to go in Cash Dragon Lemonade, take a card in your hand. So you're already going to have three cards no matter what. If you play a hand trap, you will have less. But let's say you didn't play a hand trap. You have three cards in your hand. Would you draw, you'll have four. So the end board would be Abolus of Boda Gods, usually with three counters on it. Thunder Dragon Colossus. And number 38, Hope Heartbringer Titan. So what happens is you can't add cards from your deck in your hand. You can't pop Thunder Dragon Colossus. Any monster effects that activate are going to be negated by Abolus the Border Goddess. And number 38 is going to negate a spell you play. A spell card or effect to activate it. 
they're going to negate it and it's going to go on to 38. If you try to attack, let's say, Colossus or even attack Appaloosa, which, by the way, you, you will see it it'll, after you use this person to negate it, it will be 1600. Ideally, you'll go, okay, I'll just attack Appaloosa. 38's other ability says, no, you don't do that. 38 des designates what you attack, which is usually going to be number 38 Grove Harbinger at 3000. So you're going to have to play around this Da Vinci code of, of a board that is created with Thunder Dragon combo. It's a very consistent deck. It's a very good deck. And once again, post Banless, I can easily see this deck being one of the best decks in the game. And it's a very expensive deck currently right now. And with the release of OTS Torrent Pack 12 and Cash Dragon 11 here, it'll get a lot cheaper. Luckily, all the dangers got reprinted in the, in the 2019 Megatons, so they're a lot cheaper. Uh, a, Cash, a Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, White Dragon, White Buster used to be expensive. They got reprinted. They're cheaper. World Child's Guard Dragon is like a dollar. Uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon is like 12. That will run you some money. One for one's like seven, but if you get a comment, it's dirt. Uh, Ghost Shark's nothing. Dragon Green's really nothing. Uh, let's, look at that, let's look at this deck. Take an analysis of this deck. It's not really that expensive when you start factoring in all the changes and variances of prices that will happen. The only card that's realistically expensive in this main deck of the car, of, of, of what you have right now is going to be Seafried. That's probably the most expensive deck card in the deck. I don't know why words are jumbling today. Uh, Chaos Dragon Lemonier is a phenomenal card as well, but... It's going to get a reprinted, so that means this is going to fall in value. And by the way, going back to wh why, why I think it's going to fall just at a low price point, Thunder Dragon Colossus Ultimate Rare is roughly at 20, uh, $27 right now, okay? The Ultimate Rare. The secret version of Thunder Dragon Colossus is at $6. So I think Cash Dragon Levineer being at 10 or 8 to 10 is not that big of a stretch to see where its final resting price is going to be. And I do think it will be that lower price point of a card. Phenomenal card still, by the way. For the extra deck, you definitely need all these cards, and Rhymus isn't too expensive. Appaloosa is definitely the money card. You might already have it already. I don't know. Uh, Ivy Masquerini, just need one of, which I don't think you really use, but I guess you could use. If the Warchild Shuster card is another phenomenal card. Uh, and for the most part, everything else after Colossus, which you want to buy first edition Secret Rare, or the Ultra Rare, which is like four bucks, Secret Rare six, uh, and sorry, you just like three, four bucks, because I already got reprinted. Once again, I don't think this deck is that expensive moving forward to the new meta currently right now it's still probably relatively expensive we i mean uh 11 years is still like 28 29s but the price of the deck is going to drop as you can place pull out of this deck and you can place going to other decks or you can place buy into the bandless hype when a new bandless comes out and nobody's gonna be looking at this deck as a new tier one alternative but i really do think this is gonna be a great tier one deck so besides my delicious uh quesadillas that my wife made me and my amazing hands against kana and all these great cards over here my my macbook that like all my stupid stuff over here. Besides all the stuff out here on my Instagram, what do I think can beat this deck? Well, right out of the gate, main deck right now, well, main or side, draw and Lockbird. You drop draw and Lockbird against Dun Dragon Combo, it's pretty hard to play Dun Dragon Combo. They can still end with a decent board, but if you're playing like Orcus or Strikers, you can probably beat them. Uh, currently, right now, for draw and Lockbird, market price shows the card being around $49. The card's actually about $48 for draw and Lockbird. And to be honest with you, that's a decent price I, I mean i think this card's gonna go a lot higher i think this card has so much potential i mean i know i've been talking about it for a year but i think this card's gonna hit 80 dollars and i'm not even joking with you i think this is gonna be an insanely expensive card it's ots swamp pack 8 the farther we move away from that we'll see the price point go higher ots swamp pack 12 came out i guarantee you by the end of ots swamp pack 12 this card would be higher now what could come off the ban list that would affect thunder dragon combo well one card come off the ban list that will completely nullify this deck at the very least Take this deck and just turn it back on its head. And that card's going to be Maxi. And before you go, wait a minute, V. I don't think Maxi's coming off the ban list. Or maybe I don't think Maxi. Maxi might come to one. Why can't it come to three? I think Maxi at three would fix a lot of problems in this game instantly. The card can be checked by cards like Ash Blossom Joy Spring. Uh, um, Call by the Grave. And the card is amazing. But it's still a monster effect, which can be negated by an Appaloosa. So why Maxi? Well, Maxi at three would change this game dynamically all over the place you can players will now have to debate on whether or not they want to play a mid-range deck which can be maxi can you it really benefit their opponent combo decks man can combo decks even thrive in a maxi meta that'd be a huge question to ask and control decks the decks the decks like altergeist and guru control so to a degree even two dracos they would have a chance of going oh we can play Yu-Gi-Oh now not only can we play Yu-Gi-Oh now this has flipped us from the bottom pedigree to the top dog and I think with a new control deck that Konami can drop, that can change the game drastically. 
control curse control matches are kind of boring but that can change the game drastically um and i think that when max eva was to come to three that could happen do i think it's gonna come to three i don't know my mind keeps changing on maxi i do think it's inevitable that this card's gonna be coming off the ban list i think people are crazy if they don't think this card's coming off the ban list i think it's gonna happen the only question is when and i don't know when i don't know if it's gonna come off the january ban list which i don't think it's going to that's why i think seafood's gonna be in the deck um I don't think it's, uh, uh, it might come off the ban list before Nationals, which would be the April ban list. That's a good possibility. That's going to be just slaps us in the face and goes, all right, go to Nationals and make something of yourselves. And that will change dynamically uh, the decks. And that's why I always say it's very important to learn the decks. Mid-range, control, uh, uh, um, combo. These are the three deck cores you got to, I mean, the deck types you, I really want players to learn about. And maybe I'll do a video talking about this to help you guys out. Because these are very important. The minute you get a new deck or the minute you see the meta change, you got to you gotta have a real, you got to be re really an analytical 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 and look at these decks and go okay which of these are now the top dog which of these better than the other ones and from there choose the decks in there it really helps um choose whether or not what you want to move forward with within the current meta i think mid range is the best deck right now in the meta but i think without maxi coming off the january ban list i think combo has a great potential if they could play around appaloosa i think they'll be the best deck but with maxi coming off the ban list that will change everything it can control might be one of the best decks so I always tell, tell everybody that's, that's uh, wanting to play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, learn to play those play styles, learn to be a control player, learn to be a mid-range player, and definitely learn to be a combo player. It's very hard, but if you if you want to win, you will play these decks. Anyway, Puzzle, it's your boy V. Please, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel and subscribe already. Hit the like button, comment down below. I'm a fake V, and you Puzzle, have a great day.